Okay. What's going on, Best Body CBT? Thanks for checking out the channel. I'm sitting here with Ryan Hansen, owner and founder of Primal or B Primal. I'll let him introduce himself to you. What's up, guys? My name is Ryan Hansen. I'm a personal trainer here in St. Louis, Missouri. I've been a trainer for about five years now. Um, I actually was originally in corporate finance. Did that for about probably like nine months, suit and tie, nine to five but I always worked out, I love fitness, and uh, it's what I've done since I was 12 years old, and I decided to become a personal trainer. I've been doing it for about five years now. I do one-on-ones, I do corporate wellness programs, kind of like boot camp type stuff. I do small group training, and I also have an online 16-week program, uh, which you can find on social media, B Primal with a Y, so P-R-Y-M-A-L.com, Instagram, Primal Coach, uh, Facebook, Ryan Hansen. And I'll have the link of all that in the description below. circuit uh, that was burpee jumps those were tough jump rope jump rope kettlebell uh, then we went down to the floor we did renegade rows mm -hmm. uh, planked up off of a kettlebell using yeah. a dumbbell and then we went to renegade rows and then we did a finisher of a mountain climber I love uh, hit training uh, I think it's a great finisher for the end of the workout I'm not a big fan of like traditional cardio I'm not a big fan of treadmills but that right there you like your heart rate super high and then right now we just finish it I'm still kind of sweating you know, it takes all right. So, the next thing we did is hit training. This is my favorite uh, finisher to a workout. We started with burpee jumps over a bench, 10 a piece, go off your heart rate to come down. So, your body's burning the calories. They talk about the afterburn, right? After you do something like that, you not, you not only burn calories during the workout, but after you're done, yeah, yeah, exactly. Epoch. Uh, your body has to bring yourself to that, that homeostasis uh, and, and re replenish your oxygen levels because you're breathing really heavy during the HIIT training. I'm a big fan of HIIT training. Uh, I tr pretty much finish every client workout, my own workout with some type of interval like that, whether it's Tabata, whether it's like body weight, whether it's some kind of like ball slam or on the rower. Moved on to jump rope, 30 seconds on that. For, uh, for like 15 minutes, uh, just to kind of get your heart rate up and get that cardio burn in. So, and even though we, we didn't mention at the beginning, just so uh, you all know, we did do a nice little stretch routine about 15 minutes yeah. of talking, just figuring out what we we're going to do. We didn't just jump right into it, which a lot of people tend to do that. Yeah, uh, Ron foam rolled and did the uh, yeah the, the ball, right? Yeah, the ball work. I just pressure, did like some, point. yeah, that's a great way to, you know, open up the body, get the tissues uh, supple. Right? Then we hit up the uh, kettlebell swing. We did that for 30 seconds as well. Right? You know, people are so stiff. Everybody's so stiff. You come in, you want to get the, the muscles pliable. And then also, uh, my warm up, warm up is uh, inspired by like yoga and just some body weight, like pigeons and sprinters and just like rotational stuff and just holding a squat position, just like literally just holding it on the ground and open up your hips for hip mobility. Mm -hmm. So as you work in total body, you're going to be a lot of, generate a lot of power from your hips. I've been fortunate enough that I've never gotten injured, um, but for years I didn't really warm up. I would just do like one or two sets with the empty bar and then go right into it. But for the past, I would say like two years, I've done a lot. We went to a renegade row and what we did, we actually did a single plank off of a dumbbell just to give us more clearance from the floor so we can get full extension of the actual dumbbell themselves. I mean, every workout I start with some type of like uh, body weight or with the foam roller or with the, with the uh, lacrosse ball just to get your body warm and ready to go and prepare yourself for the workout. Also mentally I find it good because you can kind of like figure out what you're going to do that day. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Not just jump right into it. I find a much better workout when I actually do warm up. Super important. You will not only uh, knock it in. And then from there we go into a renegade rotation in which we drop the weight probably down about 15, 10 pounds. That way you can actually rotate. And you're going to go from a push up and you're going to rotate up into a, uh, some people call them a holy cross or whatever. Yeah. So we do those and we rotate from side to side with a push up in between. So it promotes longevity so you can spend more time in the gym and not just you know be there for a year and then get yourself fucked up and then uh, not also uh, increase your range of motion. Intensity. <coughs> yeah. The intensity of your workout because you 
focus is kind of the mind-body connection. Yep. If you know you're going to be squatting or doing any type of total body movements, making sure that you're able to freely move your abilities up the bar, whatever your range of motion is, make sure you're pushing that to its limits and not actually getting hurt. Just make sure if you're tight your hips, go ahead and open those up and then do a couple reps, body weight, like you said, just to make sure you're there and nothing is tight or pulling needs to be addressed. And every day is different. Like right. Some days they'll come in, they'll be the super tight. Yeah. Yeah. Some days, depending on what you did that day previously. But I find that like, most, I mean, every client I meet is always so tight. So like two things I always focus on with clients is mobility. Like people should be more flexible and more mobile so they can get into the positions. And then last was a finisher, 30 seconds of mountain climbers. And uh, this whole circuit took us about four minutes. And if you're gonna try this at home, and this is the only thing you're gonna do, I'd probably say do two to three circuits and uh, keep a time so you can uh, gauge your intensity. And then I focus on getting them stronger. But most people just focus on like, just killing it in the gym, like weight, weight, get heavy weight, um, all these crazy exercises, they kind of like miss the basics. Um, but mobility stuff is super, super important. So every workout should be 15 minutes of some type of mobility, full body, like Ron said, hips, you know, just doing body weight to kind of see where you're at, uh, get your mind right, visualize the whole workout, uh, and then get right to it. And a lot of things you neglect, muscle tightness and lack of range of motion takes oh, a lot dude. of power and strength out of your lifts. So you may be a lot stronger than you think, mm -hmm. but because everything else is compensating, uh, surgeons and dominance or other muscles yep. are taking over for your uh, stabilizers, so that way you're not getting a smooth lift or you're not able to create as much power as possible, torque on the joints and things. You're gonna lose a lot of power. And, and sometimes you may neglect that for a long time and it turns into- It'll a eventually game. catch up to you. Like, It'll just because- that tension, it just snaps. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Your right. body's gonna move. Like, your body's always gonna take the path of least resistance. Like, oh, I can shoulder press. Yeah, but you're doing it wrong. So yeah, you may do, be able to do it for like a year, but like, you're gonna, ca it's gonna catch up to you. Or you are to your back. It's gonna catch up to you. Inevitably, like, you may be able to do it for a little bit, but eventually you're gonna be visiting the chiropractor, you're gonna be out of the gym, you're gonna have imbalances, and also your posture. Like, nobody wants to walk around all screwed up. A lot of guys end up so tight, they move like robots. They're just so tight from doing all these linear motions. Uh, they don't stress, they don't warm up, they don't focus on their form, they're just about like hitting heavy weight and very short ranges of motion. And then they don't balance out their workouts. Mm -hmm. like yeah, a lot of muscles do mirror muscle. Yeah, yeah, like the they have chest and arms, but then their backside would be like flat. Flat, yeah, yeah like no flat. Postural chain. It just pulls right. everything forward. Like just because you can't see it, like you should actually work. You should uh, focus on all the muscles you can't see. Right. Like double the intensity on the back, the, the hamstrings, the glutes, because that's the most important muscle. Everybody does these, right? The biceps and the chest. But like, and you end up so tight. But these are actually the most important muscles. The well-developed postural chain can actually increase your chest size from the look of it. I mean, you may have a big more right. chest if you have to stand up straight versus lean over from over tightness in your shoulders and everything. Plus, you want to be you want to be able to move. You know? right. The whole point of fitness is to be able to move and walk, and like not be in pain, not be like I meet so many people that is like, oh, I've been you know squat heavy, my knees hurt, my back hurts. Like they that's not what fitness. Up, yeah, they got like, bands and everything. Yeah, your I body see. can't take it. Not saying that it's bad if you're pushing yourself beyond your limits, but right? But every like, time you squat, any time you even do warm up, you gotta have bands on. Sometimes bands, like, elbows, wrist straps, belts, right. all this stuff. That's like something has its place, but like I right. said, it's not for every day. Yeah. yeah. Unless even you're though, like an Olympic or like yeah, an Olympic or like an elite powerlifter. Right. For the average person, if they're in pain and they have to wear all this shit, they're doing something wrong. Because me personally, uh, I had neglected my back just I like to run, and like so a lot of my hips and everything. So it. Made my lower back a lot weaker, so I actually got to where I was actually trying to train as far and as heavy as I can without a belt before I got the injury, just to strengthen my lower back versus strengthening on a belt and actually yeah. weakening those muscles. Those deep I haven't worn muscles. a belt. I, I did. I deadlift almost every week. I haven't right. worn a belt in like three, four years. I don't wear. I just I mean, focus on it's safe it up. Safe to wear a belt if you're going for big lifts, like you said, power lifts. But like I said, your daily workouts, you don't have to actually use a belt. In order to I see guys muscles. wearing belts for like tricep uh, push downs. Right. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you got to work this core. Your core, your core is your base. This is where all the power of your foundation comes from. We want to focus on like your core to your extremities. This is where everything develops here. All movement starts at the center. Yeah, and then goes, and then out, goes out. But unfortunately, people go in, they go focus on extremities, like arms and all that, and then go in. But they don't even go in. They just focus on this stuff. Uh, but it's really important to go out. You'll be stronger, more mobile, and you have better uh, longevity in the gym. That's what it's all about. It's about that lifestyle, like that long-term progress. So It's a lifestyle change, not just an event.